What's up guys? We have a special video for you today. We're gonna break down the seven things that make you bad in bed. So these are all the things that you should not do when you're in bed with a beautiful woman. Right, so without further ado, let's jump right into the list. Number one mistake that guys make is poor hygiene. This should be one of those things that goes without being said, but I think it does need to be said because a lot of guys, you know, they don't shave their pubes, they don't put on deodorant, they're a little smelly, they're a little hairy, and this is something that's very easy to take care of. But women do get turned on by body odor and shit like that. Do you want to share that story of what happened with your friend? Um, she was, there was this guy and he seemed, he was very attractive. And when it was down to go down there, to the south, he had this horrible smell that she, she's the sweetest girl you can even ever imagine. Not sweeter than you, Popsicle. Than me. And she was like, you know what? You need to go take a shower and I'm gonna leave. Damn. That was harsh. And Natty was that girl and that was the no, guy. That was and that was our first date. No, that's not true. Yeah, so you definitely want to make sure you get all the basics on point. It's really not hard. Uh, so the guys who don't have their hygiene on point are just being lazy and sloppy. So, you know, that used to be actually me in like high school, college. I never used to shave my pubes. I was just like kind of lazy about it. But then as I got older, I was like, okay, this is just like so silly. Number two. Um, something you can, like cologne, it's important. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Chanel one, it's my favorite, which I recommend it to Alex, but he I don't know. You never used it. It was too, 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 uh, I'm, too I'm, rich for my blood. I know. I'm very, I'm very into your na natural order, though. Guys, yeah, smash that like button so I can get enough money from the YouTube ads to afford this fancy yes, cologne. Please do. So that I finally get Good laid. For me. All right, number two, selfish and not caring if the girl comes. That's important. So a lot of guys have this mindset that, oh well, the girl, you know, I. I bought her drinks and I had conversation with her that was for her and now the sex is for me, right? And that's not really how it works, right? If anything, if you're good in bed, the woman should be enjoying sex more than you do. That's typically what happens. Like, you know, a woman can come three, four times in one session, a guy can come once. Um, and I speak from personal experience. So yeah, you don't want to be selfish. You definitely want to make sure that the girl gets off because especially if your main thing is you're going to be fuck buddies with a girl, you want to friends with benefits, then you know the benefits have to be worthwhile. The benefits can't suck balls because then why would the girl come back to not come? What was it? You have a quote about competing with a vibrator. You are competing. Remember, when it comes to um, you're competing with her vibrator and her vibrator always make her, makes her come. So just remember that. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of women do not like casual sex because there's really nothing for them. It's not that they don't like to have casual sex, it's just that there's really nothing in for them. So just keep that in mind, unlike what your friends from, what is the podcast name? Let's skip it, everyone, okay. know, everyone knows what we're talking like about here. Your friends say not that really my friends women either. do not enjoy sex, we do. And her pleasure, it's very important. And if you want a healthy relationship, you should care about what she likes in bed and her enjoyment, please. Or you could keep her around by paying for all her shit. That's another option. You could, you could no, do that. You, you could do that if that's your preference, or you could just fuck her well. I mean, I prefer fucking women well, but you know, that's, that's another, that's, that is another option. You're just hey, if you guys are finding value from this video, then make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. All right, back to the video. Proposal. All right, number three, not knowing how to use your fingers and having long nails. So you're the one that actually pointed out to me the importance of having your uh, sure. nails clipped. Yes. Yeah, because when you're fingering a girl, the long nails can really fuck shit up. Yeah. And then just in general, not knowing how to use your fingers or your lips to please a girl. Exactly. Because a lot of girls can't come from penetration, so they have to come from cl cl clitorial Well, we all know the clit doesn't mm -hmm. exist anyway. The clitorial stimulation. So. Uh, you need to be able to do that. I think 70% of women cannot come from penetration. Where did you pull that statistic out of? I don't know, like I read it somewhere. Yeah. Was it you who told me? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but say, but it is high. Okay. 
Number four is skipping foreplay. So yeah, a lot of guys make the mistake of they, you know, they make out with a girl and they go straight to sex. The problem is the girl's pussy is not even wet yet, so you're sticking your dick in a dry orbis, which is not pleasant for you or her. And then it's just kind of like, you know, it's just not pleasant. You want the girl to be very, very wet. You want her panties to be like soaked uh, before you even like, you know, enter her. So, and you do that through foreplay, through, you know, kissing down her body, through teasing her, through, you know, maybe like pulling her hair a little bit, choking her a little bit, within consent, of course. For Don't the, go crazy like, die woman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so don't do that. But yeah, so you, you do this by, you know, having a good amount of foreplay. And that will actually make the sex a lot better for the woman because if there's a lot of buildup, then the girl will come much faster versus if there's no buildup, it'll take her much longer to come. Do you have anything to add on no, this one? No, you were very thrilled. Number five, not picking up on her cues. So women have different cues that they will give you. Like no woman wants to be like, yeah, you know, can you just dominate me a little more? They want to show you with her, oh, can you choke me a little harder? Yeah, and like spank my ass. No, like they don't want to be logical about it. They want you to kind of just get it. So you have to be very observant to a girl's body language. Like for example, when you, uh, let's say you lightly pull her hair, how does she respond to that? Does she kind of wince or does her eyes light up? And then at that point you pull her hair a little harder and then a little harder. You know, when you spank her ass, do her eyes light up or does she not like that? If she likes it, then you want to do it a little harder and a little harder. So it's important to be able to pick up on her cues. Like if it looks like she's not really enjoying something, then you probably try something else. What are your thoughts on this? I completely agree. And um, something when, if, if she pushes you away, that's when you know she's not that into it. Some of the cues that they would do is, if you're like touching her, just babe. I'm gonna meet to your ass, go ahead. <laughs> and she's like, and she moves away, or if she starts to like create distance, that's when you know that she's not that into it. But we're talking about in bed though. Um, in, in bed it would be, it would manifest a little differently. It, yeah, okay. It, it would be more like, like, she pushes away. She 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 still put would put your like hand away. Like. It, it might not be that. It might be that. That would be a very extreme one. That's if she's really not liking. But it might be more like her moans. Like they go from like being uh uh to like uh uh. Like if her moans go down in intensity. Okay. If her body becomes more rigid, then clearly she's not liking whatever you're doing. And then when you change it, like let's say for example, you go a little rougher. And that's when her eyes start lighting up and her body starts and she starts moaning louder Then she clearly likes it rougher, right? Okay. But if she goes the other way when you go rougher, then she likes it more gentle. Okay, that's a good one. Number six, not communicating your desires, kinks, and not asking her. So that's important. we all have our little, you know, shit that we're into. Uh, me personally, I like it when Natty takes a big dump on me. So Don't be disgusting. <laughs> Why do you always have to bring shit into the equation? Why? <laughs> I'm just being honest with the guys. So, uh, yeah, so, but there's no way the girl has, especially if it's your first time hooking up, there's no way she's gonna be, at least most girls, they're not gonna be like, okay, so I like this, this, and this, and this. It takes a lot of trust. So it is good to go first and communicate what you're into because that makes her comfortable communicating what she's into. So I might say, you know, after the first time we hook up, I might be like, yeah, by the way, I really liked it when you did this, and I'm really into this. This is one of my biggest turn-ons. Sometimes I might do this even before sex. I'm be like, you know, one of my biggest turn-ons is eye contact. I really like it when you stare in my yeah, eyes. You did that. Yeah, so, so the girl's like, oh, I like that too. And then like, we both know like what pleases the other person when you share what you're into then the girl feels emboldened to share what she's into now obviously you're not going to do that like right away like hey can i meet you real quick yeah sure by the way i really like it when you stare in my eyes and call me daddy you know but you know at the appropriate time it is good to communicate your desires and kinks one technique you use is that you try to guess you play like a guessing game you're like i oh, guess yeah. that you like it loud i guess that you're you like to be choked that's something that you did on the first date yeah, yeah, yeah. So one, that was yeah, I forgot about that. But yeah, I do that sometimes on first dates. Is I will just like play the guessing game. Like I can tell you're into, and I'll just name things that pretty much every girl is into, yeah. uh, and then I'll gauge her response based on my second thing. It's very easy because I'll say like, I bet you're into getting choked, and then before she has a chance to answer, I'll do this, and if her, if her, if her, if she, her face lights up. I know that's a yes. Yeah. If she pulls away and she's like this, then I know that's probably a no. I'll be, and then I'll calibrate. I'll probably say, I'll be, and then she pulls, like do the pull away. I'll be like, no, not that. I think it's something else. So she doesn't even have a chance to tell me no. It's like I call myself. Maybe it's this. Ah, there we go. We got a bullseye. 
So I might do something like that. And number seven is being too passive. So no girl ever likes a guy who's just like, okay, so is it okay if I touch you a little bit? Yeah, is this good? Does it feel nice? Not too much, not too much. Take charge. Yeah, you, a woman, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of paradoxical because you know, now in the culture we're moving into this whole like, oh, sign a form before you, you, know, you escalate, blah, blah, blah. But like no woman ever gets turned on by that. So you do have to use your good judgment. Now, obviously you should never do anything that goes too far or makes a girl feel uncomfortable. But that being said, no woman wants a guy who's super passive. Girls typically enjoy a guy who's like assertive and knows how to take charge in the bedroom. Even if they are super, uh, let's just say, domineering in the rest of their lives, still those women, on average, like even those career women who are super, I've hooked up with them and believe me, in bed, they still like a dominant guy. So it is important to be that guy. You don't want to be the super passive guy. Like one thing you can do is, you know, possessiveness. You can be like, yeah, this is my pussy now. Like this is my ass. Like do shit like that. And that will really, really turn girls on. You have anything to add on that one? No, I completely agree with you. I think that women want to, especially if she's a very high powered woman or a woman who has to deal with a lot of stress in her life she wants to let go at least if it's just for an hour to just like okay you take the and then while she, uh, you take the wheel her being with a dominant guy who she can trust as long as there's trust and the guy's dominant then she can truly let go which will give her much better sexual experience which will make you come off as much better in bed but should you go full on dom on the first date? No, 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 not full on. But you, you do play it and you base, you base it on the situation. Depends on how the girl responds. Okay. Uh, probably not on the first date. You kind of build up to it. You know, you never go 100% on the first bang. You go like 60% and then you build up to it. Okay. Nailed it. All right, so there it is. Seven things that make you bad in bed. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe to our channel. Just smash the subscribe button below. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time.